In the previous videos, we looked at the principles of creating a buttons template and then how to add buttons into a template. In this video, we will look at setting the behavior of these buttons, registering actions and some other useful settings. As a reminder, this demonstration was created using Naxport Scout Plus, so you may see some options that are not visible if you are using Basic or Basic Plus. In the Button Properties window, select the Behaviour tab. The top two options show you whether your button is a category or a descriptor and let you change this characteristic. Remember that descriptors are not available in the basic version of Naxport. Category buttons can have the most settings applied as they are the buttons that will be creating your registered actions to review. Pre and post time settings determine how long the register should appear for when pressed. You can change the pre and post times with the plus and minus buttons or by typing a number in. When you press a button with a pre time of 10 seconds, you will be able to review that action 10 seconds before it was pressed. If that button had a post time of 5 seconds, the register that you review will then stop 5 seconds after the time you pressed it. So, if you press this shop button 30 seconds into your video, when you come to review that register it will play from 20 seconds until 35 seconds in the video, 10 seconds pre-time and 5 seconds post-time. You can apply these settings to multiple buttons at the same time once you have selected them. Some actions can't be recorded with a preset time, like possessions. For these actions it is best to use the manual mode setting. With this setting for your category button, the action will register from when you press the button on until when you press it off. However, you can still add a pre and post time onto manual mode buttons too. This means that the register will appear with your chosen amount of seconds both before and after you turn it on and off. When you have two buttons in manual mode, you will see an exclusions option appear for those buttons. By making an exclusion between manual mode buttons, Naxport will automatically stop them from being registered at the same time. So if Possession Away was on, and then you click Possession Home, the Home button would turn on, and the Away button would automatically turn off. You can have exclusions between multiple manual mode buttons, like the three shown here. When you click the buttons, you will see that the exclusions have applied across all of them. With buttons in manual mode, you can choose to see a time label rather than the usual counter. When the button is on, a timer will appear to show you the amount of seconds it is on for. This feature is not possible in Naxport Basic. There are also tools for rating registers on a scale of 1 to 5 and having buttons as point actions so you can see a score in your timeline. These are covered in other tutorial videos. A feature possible from Scout Plus is to make manual mode buttons only receive descriptors when they are active. So with this option ticked, a manual mode button will not receive descriptors when it has been turned off. You will learn more about where descriptors go later in this video. The Minimum Descriptors Alert tool highlights which of your registers have not got enough descriptors in them. If you set the value at 2, for example we want to see where the shot was from and if it was on or off target, when you go to the timeline you can see which registers don't have two descriptors in them so you can quickly edit them and add in the missing descriptors. Descriptor buttons have less behaviours available as they are bits of information going inside your category registers. The first option lets you hide the red descriptor icon which shows next to the button. Having descriptors automatically added into each category you press is a really useful tool. You can have descriptors for periods in the game and whether you're playing home or away for example. There is no limit on the number of descriptors which can be automatically added. This descriptor information can be used for deeper analysis and comparisons when reviewing, as it will be inside every register that you have created. A descriptor with this behaviour on shows a black outline around the red descriptor icon. You can change it when editing the template, and later we will see a faster way to change when you are registering with the template. Groups are useful for organising your actions and come into play within other areas of Naxport like the dashboard tool. There is a tutorial video with more information on groups available. The search and replace feature lets you quickly change text across multiple buttons. 
By typing home into the search field, you see that this text appears in three different buttons. You can now quickly change home to a team name by typing in the replace field and pressing the tick. The matrix tool is available from Basic Plus and shows you the relationships between your categories and descriptors. When editing a template, you can preset your matrix order so that your category rows always appear in the same way and when you open your matrix, the descriptor columns will also appear in the same way. To reorder the columns and rows, you just have to drag and drop them into the position you would like. When you next use this template, your categories and descriptors will appear in this set order in the timeline and matrix. Templates that you create in Naxport can be exported for use in the Naxport Tag and Go app. To make this process better, you can change your template window so that it has the same size dimensions of an iPad screen in the Windows Properties tab. The button at the top right of the Template Properties window lets you export this template as a file that can be imported onto your Tag Go app. The floppy disk icon lets you save your template. We recommend saving templates in the default location that appears. This is the Categories folder inside the Naxport Data folder, which should be in My Documents. These .NAC-CAP template files can be sent to other Naxport users so they can make use of the template. To try out your template, go back to the main menu and start to register against a live capture or an existing video file. In the registering environment, you see your video window, your template window and the register control window. The register control window lets you move between environments and determine settings for your registering. In this window, you can open up a different template file, create a brand new template or edit the template that you have open. With the video playing, you register actions by pressing the corresponding buttons on your template. You will see that manual mode buttons flash to show you when they are on, and stop flashing once you manually turn them off, or they are automatically turned off by an exclusion. Once you have started registering, you can quickly edit your template if you notice any mistakes or changes that are needed. On this Out of Play category, you can see the time label in action. When the manual mode button is turned on, you see the timer start counting. The other possession buttons just use the normal counters so you can see how many times that action has occurred. You can see how the exclusions speed up your registering as you don't have to turn the manual mode button off before you press another one on if they have exclusions between them. In the register control, you can see the registered actions. The categories are in bold and the descriptors inside them appear underneath. You can see how the first half descriptor has been automatically added into each register. The quick way to change this setting, at half time for example, is to right click the descriptor button and then turn off the auto add behaviour. You can then right click another descriptor button and turn this behaviour on. The best way to see your registered actions is with the play by play table. This also helps to show and explain to you where descriptors go once they are pressed. A descriptor will go into the last press category, so you must ensure that you press your category first, followed by the descriptors you want to add into it. You can see these descriptors adding into the shop paint and category. When you next press a category, any new descriptors that are pressed will go into this new category, as it becomes the last pressed one. So the player buttons you see here for example. However, descriptors will also go into any active category. An active category is a manual mode button that is on. If you have a manual mode button on, then press a normal category, the descriptors that you press will go into both the manual mode button and the last press category. When we press the possession category off, it became the last press category. So any descriptors pressed after that will go into the possession category. The option of manual mode buttons only receiving descriptors when active would prevent this behaviour. To confirm, descriptors will go into any active category, remember that you could have multiple manual mode buttons on, and the last press category. So, make sure to press your category button, then the descriptors you want to add into it afterwards.